Hello and welcome to my garage. A bit of a wet and miserable day in Northampton today, but uh, that said, we've still got plenty of work to do on the car. And I was given a given a tip by uh, by um, Alistair Cox um, from AJ Barnard Engineering this week regarding bump steer on an MGB and an easy way of checking it. Um, to check the bump steer, what we need to do is get the uh, get the front springs off, then reassemble the front suspension, let it move through its travel, and we can use our use our alignment gauge to see uh, to see how much bump steer we've got. Obviously we'll be hoping for as little as possible, um, but it's an important thing to know. So to start off with, I'm just going to measure the ride height on both sides. And to do that, I'm going to go from the centre centre of the wheel to the top of the wheel arch, and that, well, that just just over 32 centimetres. We don't need to be sort of super accurate, as long as we take the measurement both sides. And then when we have the springs off, we'll move the car up and down through its travel to see what it does. So I've taken the ride height from the right hand side down, just before I, uh, just before I go ahead and take the, uh, remove those front springs, I've just put the, uh, put the alignment gauges on just to see what, I've, see what alignment I have with the, uh, with the springs in place. And it's, uh, it's, at the moment it's set to 30 degrees toe out, um, so once I've, got the, uh, once I've got the springs off we'll have a, a check and see what happens when the, uh, when the vehicle's moving through a suspension. I won't be videoing the spring removal procedure, but I've made a I've made a video on that already, which I'll put a I'll put a link in at, at the side there. Just to show you very briefly, this is the uh, the front suspension there with the uh, with the springs removed. Um, so you can see we've just bolted the uh, the top part back up here, and you you, you will notice I've got these quite nice um, eccentric trunnion bushes that allow me to adjust the canvas. So I've just put it back. As, as it would be, I'll put the uh, I'll put the wheel and tire back on now. We'll drop it back down to sort of uh, where its ride height would be, and we'll start taking some dimensions. So now I've got uh, I've got both the uh, both the wheel, wheels and tires back on. I've just got a single jack under the front now, so I'm just going to lower lower the car down very gently until we sort of get it at its at its ride height. So let me just lower this very carefully. That wasn't me, that was the jack. So let me just stop it there and have a quick look and see where we are. It might be interesting to sort of start at a higher level anyway. So that's that's 34. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to start taking some measurements now because at the moment it's sitting a bit harder than it would do normally, but it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how it, the, the steering changes if it does at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a note of the ride height. I'm just going to work on the driver's side for now. Make a note of the of, of the ride height here, then also the steering angle as the suspension moves up and down. So let's start off. So this is starting off 33 and a half centimetres, and that's about a centimetre over the ride height. So let me just see what we've got. 3.5. That stayed where it is at, uh, at 30 degrees to start off with. So let me come down just a, a tiny amount each time. I'll try and do about a centimetre, I think. Okay, so that's about a centimetre down. I'll just check that the uh, gauge is still in line. We've got 33 centimetres now. I'll just check the uh, the gauge on this side as well. Okay. So let's see it. 33 centimetres. Uh, that, that hasn't changed. So that's that's good to start off with. So 33. So let's try a bit a bit further down. Now try and. Aim for 32 centimetres. Let's see what that says. So that's 31, but I'll take a measurement anyway. Again, we're just going to make sure that the, uh, the gauge goes back into alignment because the wheels do move as it goes through its, through its travel. Okay, so let's see what we've got there. I think this will be the interesting one. So at 31, that has moved a touch. So 
So it's probably... Oh, maybe 40 degrees of toe out, so that's 31. So as that has moved, it has pushed the wheels outside. Let's go, let's go right down now and see where we get to. That's as low as I want to go, I think. So let's just take, take some measurements again. That's 29 centimetres, and that probably means we're on the bump stops. Oh, annoyingly, the jack is just in the way. Let me see if I can move that a bit. So I've got the car down as far as I dare now, it's very much on the bump stops. I've put the, have had to put the jack in from behind in order to uh, get some clearance. And I can see now that the, uh, the tow out has increased slightly. So that's gone up to probably nearly nearly one degree now um, from, from 40. Let's just check the ride height quickly as well. So the ride height there is about, about 29 which is probably further than it would be would be usually and I'll put I'll put 90 minutes that what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna get the car jacked up because I don't like it being quite uh, quite as low as this in all honesty I've had to move the jack back round to the front I couldn't raise the car up from behind so let me, let me get it lifted up again now just very carefully jack sort of in the middle of the uh, on the rear of the cross member at the front there and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get a couple of stands under the car and then we can, uh, we can look at getting these, uh, the springs back in. So that's the springs, springs fitted back in on both sides. Now I'm just going to give under here a little bit of a clean up. There's a little bit of rust just, just sort of appearing over winter where the car's, uh, car's not really been used. So a quick clean up under here. Then we get the actual stands out of the way and get the, uh, get the car back onto its feet again. Just heard the, uh, the slight bang now. That's just the spring relocating inside its housing. What I like to do when it's back on its feet is just give the car just a little rock side to side just to make sure that the springs are fully engaged in their holders. So, this experiment has given me some interesting food for thought. We started off with uh, 30 minutes of tow. I think I was saying 30 degrees earlier, that's not, not great, it's 30 minutes, so a small small amount of tow out on the car. We then found it was sort of between 30, 33 centimetre ride height to 31 centimetre ride height. We, we, we found it added about one minute of, um, of extra tow out, which is kind of a small amount, but we did find when it went down to 29 when a car was right down on its bump stops. That went up to 90 minutes of tow out, so nearly one degree of tow out. Um, I think that equates to around about five, five and a half millimetres when I checked it on the scale. So that, that's sort of interesting to see. I've never noticed it in the car, but I would sort of be keen to see now if adding some blocks under that steering rack makes any difference. So I'm going to, that's going to be a, sort of a video for the future. I'll have to, I'll have to sort of decide what I need to do with doing with the cross member first and then I'll buy some metal and make up some racks for it. But hopefully in the meantime you'll join me for some more videos. Um, so more, hopefully more content coming over the next few weeks. We've got a, a sort of fair bit to do on the car to get it ready for the race season. So I'll be documenting what I can. And as always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and you'll be kept updated with all the things going on in my garage. Many thanks. Bye.